So let's listen in here as uh, this pursuit is underway. On the scanners at this point, we are looking at what looks like the rooftop number 743 of that stolen cruiser. And clearly, this is a very concerning situation. And you had mentioned, Justin, that those deputies hopped in another cruiser behind yeah, it and followed is... suit. I apologize, Sandra. It's a little difficult to, uh, to uh, with so many sheriff's vehicles out here, to actually uh, uh, nail down which one it is. Uh, there is a number, I believe it's 743, so I'm, I'm trying to locate that. All right, so this all happened according to what we know so far at around 1.30 this afternoon in the Compton area. This came across the sheriff deputy scanner that a suspect, a female African-American, took a patrol car, a, a cruiser, from a sheriff's deputy. I believe they were in a parked situation. We, of course, don't know the details at this point, but then once they realized that she had allegedly taken this cruiser and started leaving the scene the deputies jumped into another cruiser behind and is in pursuit of that vehicle right now the big concern there's loaded shotgun in that vehicle obviously we don't know whether it is locked up for storage as usually they are in these types of situations where it is in a patrol vehicle but clearly uh, that is a big concern right now and of course deputies want to make sure they track down this female suspect and this driver again we are looking at skyfox aerials right now this started in Compton. However, where are we now, Justin? All right, as he was mentioning before, I'm not sure if he can hear me, but we are looking at the vantage point from Skyfox right now, that police cruiser that has stolen the sheriff's deputy's patrol cruiser, I should say, is right now going uh, down that major thoroughfare right there. It looks like perhaps a little bit high rate of speed, but going with the flow of traffic. Thankfully, there are not too many cars in the way right now. And again, other deputies are in pursuit of this stolen cruiser. And you can see that that stolen cruiser right there going through the intersection. Uh, we want to get further information in terms of where we're looking at right now, which neighborhoods we're looking at. This started in Compton. But Justin, if you could hear me up, up high in Sky Fox, what do we know right now? Looks like they're picking up speed here. All right, it looks like we're working out our audio issues from Sky Fox. We have Kevin Takumi, another Fox 11 colleague on the phone who could tell us a little more. Kevin, what's your perspective? Yeah, what I'm hearing is it's moving. They, they made a turn um, northbound on Cherry. We're into the, like the North Long Beach area. Northbound on Cherry, the vehicle is moving towards the 91 freeway here. So it's uh, they, they turn northbound and they're moving um, to the left of where, where Skyfox is looking at. So, but um, they, there's a, two sheriff's airships over this, kind of watching this vehicle, trying to keep track of it as it moves through. But you can see there's a lot of cross traffic, um, but those those uh, Skyfox is trying to pick up the uh, pick up the pursuit once again. But last, uh, we're watching the tracking of the airship here, coming up on the 91 freeway, northbound on Cherry, coming up on the 91 freeway here. We'll have to see what that suspect does, uh, whether they get onto the freeway or if they, uh, or if they stay on surface streets here. So, so you can see he's right there, just went through that intersection here, just through Artesia here, still moving northbound. We're just about to hit the 91 freeway, and looks like we're going to get on the 91 freeway going eastbound. 91 freeway eastbound here and speeds picking up, looking at the traffic up ahead. Uh, it is pretty light on that 91 freeway. Uh, we start heading towards the 605 freeway. And uh, like I said earlier, their biggest concern is any weapons in the car. And if they, uh, usually they are locked up. Those, uh, those weapons are still are locked to the center console. But since the keys are in the vehicle, um, that is a danger there if this comes to a stop. But usually the, those weapons are locked in the, uh, locked in the center console. Absolutely, so Kevin. Speed speaking up here. Speed speaking up. It's they're, they're, the airship is tracking them about 70 miles an hour here. It's still going eastbound on the 91 freeway, and we're going to be coming up to Lakewood Boulevard next, and then the 605 very soon. 
And what is uh, the big unknown as well is look at the erratic driving right now that we're looking at. And a lot of the people who are driving on the road as well, fellow motorists, they have no idea that this is a stolen cruiser from a sheriff's deputy. And right now they're just seeing that this cruiser is going at a high rate of speed, 105 miles per hour right now, according to uh, what we're clocking on Sky Fox. And clearly this is a dangerous situation just in terms of driving a vehicle that fast and also not knowing for other motorists around them that this is in fact not a sheriff deputy behind the wheel of this cruiser right now so anything erratic is just the certain certainly the big unknown right now and again as you mentioned the fact that there are weapons inside this vehicle it's the big concern but we did see as you pulled out earlier from that shot when we were just over Long Beach we did see several other cruisers in pursuit of the suspect as well as I thought I saw a motor officer on a bike as well. Okay, there you see in pursuit right there a couple of more uh, sheriff deputies following and hopefully catching up to that suspect. But again, we're marking this vehicle as uh, 743 in terms of the rooftop number. There is a red flashing light on top of it as well. Again, this all started at 130 in the Compton area, I believe. A female suspect jumping into that cruiser and then taking off in it. And so clearly we don't know the motive at this point and we don't know what the situation is. But again, now going into the Long Beach area, Kevin, what else can you tell us? Yeah, you can see as we're start, <clears throat> starting to approach the uh, 605 freeway, the CHP has also been notified about this pursuit as well, that it is a stolen black and white, that it has, uh, it still has its weapons in the vehicle. Um, but you can see the, the person who stole this vehicle, the lights, so at least the lights and sirens are on, or at least the lights are on, we can tell. The lights are on, but speed's approaching, going back and forth here between about 90 to 100 miles an hour. Staying in that lane as we go um, eastbound on the 605 freeway here, actually east, eastbound on the 91 freeway. And once again, looking at the maps ahead, traffic very light all the way through to the 5 freeway. So you can see... There are other officers that are trying to catch up to this to stay with it, but there are there are two airships over this. There's two uh, LA LA sheriff's airships above this, and I believe I heard that possibly there was a uh, CHP airship that was taking off as well, and they are out of Fullerton, so they will be approaching Fullerton here very soon as well. Are those speeds correct? It's clocking 112 miles per hour now. Yes, those, that is correct. Um, both on uh, what SkyTrack you see. Uh, is tracking it as, um, and that is exactly what the airship and the ground units are calling out as well. So those are real speeds there. Speeds going up and down, going from 90 to 100, 115 miles at some points here. But that is the correct speed that you see up in the upper right-hand corner of your screen right there. And that's the big alarming thing about this because of the fact that this driver, this female suspect, behind the wheel right there of that stolen cruiser, driving very erratically right there. Now you're seeing high rates of speed backing down at times. And we saw her blow through an intersection as well, closely uh, almost hitting somebody else. And we have no idea. Look at that. Uh, thankfully, there is uh, light traffic at this point, at this hour, at 1.15 right now but clearly we have no idea the intent the motive anything behind this uh, situation and in terms of the mind of the driver the suspect right now going again picking up the speed on the 605 as you mentioned but uh, wow we're, what, st we're still in the we're still in the 91, 91 rather yes. passing Car Carmenita we're in the Cerritos area here so 80, 80 to 100 miles an hour in the Cerritos area Traffic, luckily, relatively light at this point. Most of the traffic is going at about you know, your regular 65 to 80 miles an hour, but you can see how fast that this uh, this cruiser is going by all of that other traffic. Now, the black and whites are still significantly behind because they're, they're driving a little more, much more safely here, um, trying to stay out of collisions. They are staying pretty much in that carpool lane, trying to keep it clear here. But those speeds jumping up and down here, uh, crossing that 100 mile an hour point. We're going to be hitting the five freeway in about a minute here. Um, eastbound 91 freeway here. We'll be coming up on uh, Knott's Berry Farm. So we're starting to get into the Buena Park area. So very quickly out of Cerritos and into the Buena Park area coming up. Knott will be next and then Beach Boulevard and then the five freeway.
Yeah, you can see just by the rate of speed right there, clocking 101, 107 at some point. So clearly very erratic driving. And I'm now joined by my colleague Marla Teas here, who's on the desk and looking at this as well. This reminds us of what we saw just a week ago, Marla, of another suspect stealing a black and white, another cruiser in the Antelope Valley area. Obviously, that ended really tragically and it ended in a fatal situation. We don't know what this suspect is thinking right now behind the vehicle of this vehicle. Yeah, Sandra, uh, when I stepped into the newsroom and I heard that another uh, stolen cruiser was now being pursued, I thought, oh my goodness, it was less than a week ago that we did see that play out in the Antelope Valley and that resulted in that young man's death. Uh, we're still, uh, of course, investigating that and now we have this one to follow and this one is extremely dangerous, as you pointed out multiple times, speeds well above 100 miles per hour. We're seeing many any near misses as well as all of these unsuspecting drivers and also you pointed out thank goodness and so as Kevin of course that traffic is light and as this person does whatever they can and we do know it's a female suspect according to authorities to uh, evade getting captured mm -hmm. absolutely the big concern obviously we've been talking about is the fact that there are loaded weapons or at least one loaded shotgun inside that police cruiser obviously with the female suspect in possession of the key key in order to operate that black and white the thinking is that she does have access to a loaded weapon inside that cruiser and that is why the response to this is not being taken lightly at all and look at the speeds right now obviously wide open on the 91 as it approaches where are we now kevin we just just passed the five freeway interchange Looks like they committed to going eastbound on the 91, so we're getting into that uh, Anaheim area here. Um, once again, freeway looks very clear all the way out towards the Corona area. There might be a little bit of slowdown up ahead here, but once again, you can see speed still running up in that high end of 90 to 100 miles an hour here. Coming up, uh, just passing, looks like we're gonna be just passing Brookhurst, and once again, we just passed the, uh, the five, Split and eastbound 91 coming into the uh, Anaheim Fullerton area. So, um, still, the sheriff's department still chasing this. They are still on it, but CHP has been advised. But they're taking taking them takes them a little time to get into position for a pursuit that is moving this quickly. So they, the Anaheim, actually the uh, Orange County CHP, we're trying to get into position here. Hopefully they can catch into it and again stand by once we get nearer to the 57. Skyfox trying to get a look through that driver's side window there, but you can see somebody moving or one person moving around inside there. It is reported that it is a female that, is, that hopped in there and took off in the deputy's vehicle, but still tracking it about 80, 90 miles an hour here. We're just past Euclid, and once again, we have light traffic up ahead. That carpool lane is pretty well open as you make your way eastbound all the way into the Corona area. Kevin, thank you. I want to quickly say uh, a big thank you to Sandra Endo, who brought you this coverage uh, just a few minutes ago when we jumped on the air. She is signing off for the day. She's been here, of course, since very early this morning. So uh, it's Marla Teas here on the desk as we are now just hit two o'clock. Kevin Takumi uh, with me to cover this pursuit of a stolen L.A. County Sheriff's Deputy Cruiser. This is the second time that this has happened in less than a week. It was six days ago that we saw the other one uh, play out in the Antelope Valley. That one turned deadly. This one on uh, the 91 East, as it has been for a long time now, from L.A. County now into Orange County. You just mentioned the exits we've passed, and our Extreme Nav technology shows us that we're just passing East Street, Raymond Avenue uh, in Orange County, Kevin. We're also getting word from officials that even though that there are weapons locked up, even though that this a female suspect behind the wheel as we're now off the 91. We exited here. It looks like Raymond Avenue as we're sk skirting on by. It's come to a stop uh, at trying to get by these vehicles, Kevin. We understand that it takes a whole other set of keys to unlock where those weapons are within the cruiser. So in other words, this suspect would not have access to those weapons that are locked up, which of course is a huge relief. 
Yeah, that is a, that is a good sign. Um, you see, now we're getting off into surface streets again here. We're northbound on Raymond. We're in the Anaheim and Fullerton kind of areas. Suspect is driving back and forth using the opposite lanes of traffic here and keeping keeping up those speeds there um, on these surface streets. Now we're making a turn going westbound on Orange Thorpe, and that's going to keep us just north of the 91 freeway here, but moving back westbound. And like I said, this is going to run us alongside in the Fullerton area north of the 91 freeway. We'll be, uh, we'll be passing through the uh, Fullerton uh, Municipal Rail Yard where, the, where they do pickups uh, for Amtrak and whatnot. But you see speeds 90 miles an hour here. We are still on surface streets going by, going by cars that are going about 35 miles an hour. Uh, I like they're standing still here and coming up, up to an intersection. You can see there is a green light ahead now trying to make a southbound turn. Mm -hmm. Southbound on Lemon, that's going to kind of take us back towards the 91 freeway. So we'll see if uh, if they if, if this person stays onto uh, Lemon here, tries to cross over, or tries to get back onto the freeway back in the other direction. And it looks like we're going to we're still we're just about to come up to that oh, 91 no. freeway here. Wrong, almost almost decided to take the wrong way of traffic there. But there was a there was a tow truck that was coming northbound. So we're still moving southbound on Lemon Lemon Street and going over the over the 91 freeway and then continuing. So we're going to continue southbound on Lemon here. Now this street does dead end up ahead. So you can, it goes left or right on La Palma when it comes to it. Now getting, there's a car, there was a truck that was making left turn there. Yep. So they had to squeeze around. Now we're on a smaller commercial street here. Yeah, so it's East so the ground, Commercial the, Street. It's trying to get the ground units into this here and trying to see because this this is kind of like a dead end area here. This is a dead end. Um, the only way I'm trying to look at the map here. The only way they kind of might be able to come back out. So they they have also also authorized the pit earlier in this pursuit. Hmm. So this is coming up to a dead end. The airship is calling a dead end up ahead here because it's going to come up to the train tracks. So there's Obviously. not going to be much much more of this. Yeah, because uh, clearly the suspect doesn't know that she is headed toward a dead end street. So we're going to see how this all plays out. As you saw the black and white, there's that dead end now into this uh, yard here of I'm not sure which kind of some sort of a construction lumber yard, perhaps you see the work. Yeah, we're in, a, we're in a commercial. We're in a commercial. Oh, my goodness. Okay, they're in a commercial yard and yep. zigzagging through this commercial yard here. Trying to find their okay. way out. And yeah, she's trying to find her way out now, kind of parallel on actually on the railroad tracks there almost, and then cut back out. And still, they're they're talking about setting up a containment of everything here. Okay, it's about almost getting stuck in the dirt here. So they're 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 trying to block off the exit to make sure that she is not able to get out of this. Hopefully, they're going to try to contain this in mm -hmm. the yard here. I hope so. I hope that they've now blocked off the uh, entrance way with other black and whites. It's going to be. Oh, they've just, okay. nope, of They're course we've seen to, that well, multiple they times. Able to... And they were not able to block off the entrance way. So uh, while we thought that that was going to be a surefire way to end this, it doesn't, oh, there's the pit, okay, there's a pit. To... It doesn't. Oh, there's the pit, okay, there's they're a pit. To, they're trying to, yeah, they're trying to pit it there, try to get it to come around. The suspect trying to make it her okay, way back out. Okay, so they out. have. So now they've they got, they've, got, they've, they've got the suspect the surrounded right now. Yes, yeah, so this is East Commercial Street and North Olive Street. And you see plenty of deputies out. Obviously, their guns drawn. This is a very dangerous situation because... A, she's using the vehicle as a deadly weapon. There are weapons inside, although we understand that she doesn't have access to the weapons. If you're just joining us, they're going to the block it in with another. They're going to block it in with another one. Yep. So now they're going to they're going to block it in, and then they're going to. Oh. Uh, oh my goodness! So this deputy just got uh, out. He and got out of it, but it didn't. Yeah. He, he got didn't out put of it in it, park. But he didn't lock it into gear. He so. didn't lock it into gear, and then thank goodness he was able to get back in there. Okay, so. It's just a matter of time, but extremely dangerous situation. Uh, you see all of the deputies now at the rear, guns drawn. It doesn't appear that the driver will be able to carry on, at least in the vehicle. Will the... Now they, they, 
they blocked it off uh, substantially in front. So there's no way, even even though that even though that other uh, SUV rolled back, uh, the road is completely blocked up ahead. So you can see there's an arrest team that's kind of making their making their making putting their team together there alongside as well as a shield. Uh, so they may try to come up to the vehicle and just try to uh, pull pull the suspect out there. They're trying to clear everybody, all the other bystanders downrange of this, what's going on right now, but they, they don't know if the suspect had it, but it looks like they're going to move they're in here. They're going to try to, they'll either, they'll either break the window or they'll just try to open, they can, they can open the door themselves. They have general keys that they can just, just open the, the door open. and try to get the suspect out. They're going to yank and the suspect out. They're just going to, they're just going to, they pull her out. Put her in and handcuffs. Put her in handcuffs, take her into custody. It doesn't look like there's a lot of struggle going on there, which is a good sign. So it looks like the person is just giving up at this point. So deputies putting the cuffs on her. And so far, the, so it looks like this is going to come to a stop here. And with all those high speeds, I didn't hear of any collisions that happened throughout this pursuit, with, especially with those speeds of 100 miles an hour or more. Yeah, uh, upwards of 100 miles per hour, 120 at one point, uh, and plenty of near misses. So, yes, now the suspect is on her feet in handcuffs. We're seeing, as we zoom in, trying to get a, a better look, but those deputies are now going to cart her off to jail. Uh, this all happened at 1.30, and Kevin, do we know... We understand that the vehicle was parked. Was this person stopped by deputies when they when she stole the cruiser? Do we know? Um, we don't know. We we are we are hearing that possibly uh, the the call came out on the radio that uh, deputy said someone jumped into their car. Um, this was out of the city uh, city of Compton where this all started. So mm -hmm. what we had heard initially was that. Um, the deputies called out that somebody was in, into their car. There was a second patrol unit that was with that those deputies, so they were able to start the pursuit right off of the bat. But you can see here it, that it, person being taken into custody, kind of wearing a security yep. uh, a, a shirt that says security on the back. So we will have to uh, later get the backstory on exactly who this is, who this suspect is, and what uh, what what prompted them to just jump in the vehicle and get started. But it doesn't. It does so far. It doesn't sound like this was on a traffic stop. This was just they were on a call of some kind, and somebody this person just jumped into the vehicle and took off. And you're absolutely right about that. Nice observation that the uh, shirt that the suspect has on says security on the back. So. We'll work to find out uh, more information about the suspect, how this happened. And uh, to your point too, Kevin, thank goodness, there were plenty of near misses, but as far as we saw, no actual accidents as a result of the reckless driving.